Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's production of the Tableau Customer Conference 2013. We're here in the uh, nation's capital at the Gaylord Hotel, and uh, we've been going wall to wall for the last two days, talking to customers, talking to executives of Tableau, uh, independent consultants and, and observers like Ray Wang. Uh, today we're talking to uh, several partners as, as well. Rick Tam Daniels is here. He is uh, the Vice President of Technology at a company called Ativio, uh, a Boston-based, Newton, Massachusetts-based company that's doing a lot with mixed content, big content, bringing together you know, transactional data and, and other types of unstructured data into a unified view, uh, partners with Tableau. Rick, welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what you guys are, uh, are doing here at the event and what the relationship is with Tableau. Yeah, so we've had a long-standing relationship with Tableau. This is actually my third TCC, and to be honest, it's one of the most exciting events that I get to go to every year because this crowd is so enthusiastic about the technology. It's unbelievable, it. isn't it? It's yeah, un yeah unreal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so really what we're doing in the ecosystem here with Tableau is we're delivering insight from the world of human-created information. Let's think about emails, documents, CRM case notes, survey comments. You know, there's a lot of valuable business insight in those sources that's highly relevant to a lot of the analysis that's already being done today with Tableau. And we're able to bring that information in. Tableau connects to us like any other data source. And we're able to create rich visualizations to help businesses make better decisions using all relevant information. So you guys got a booth here. Yep, um, very exhibitor. Talking to, the, talking to the customers flying by. What, are they, what kinds of things are they asking you? I mean, I know, I mean, I was asking some of the execs uh, yesterday about you know, how do you deal with unstructured uh, yeah. uh, data, how text analytics and the like, and they said, well, that's what, what many of our partners you know, can help us with. Is yeah. that, for instance, a problem that you solved? Do you get that question a lot? What yeah. kinds of questions are you getting at the, at the booth? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things we talk a lot about, just kind of a, in a little bit way of background, is the concept of what's being called big content now, and Gartner's out there talking about this, is an idea of there really are different technologies and techniques to get to the different parts of the big data ecosystem, and kind of lumping them all under unstructured or big data really doesn't give you the nuances and the technology needs to effectively get information. But, and, and so there's a lot of talk about, you certainly questions about social media. Social Big content does that though, right? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. of course. Okay, explain That's what how. we care about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, there's a lot of folks out there on social media, social analytics, but the reality is for a lot of businesses, the text-based information that's the most relevant is, is sitting within systems behind the firewall. So we got examples, we're doing a demo at our booth that folks can check out, where we're looking at one of the billing problems in healthcare. So hospitals, the way they get reimbursed is by properly tagging patients with the diseases they have, right, to get funds allocated. And, and, but there are always mistakes. There's always issues in the business process, clerical errors. But where's the point where you know for sure what a patient has? It's when they're interacting with the doctor. It's in the doctor's notes. So we're actually able to analyze the doctor's notes, identify what diseases and, and, and conditions they likely have, and Tableau lets us to visualize what is our exposure across the entire patient population. What, how much revenue are we missing out on because we're not coding people correctly? So wait, you're saying you can read the doctor's notes. Can you read hieroglyphics too? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> they're, either, they're uh, either dictator or typed in today. Jeff, so, thank, thank yeah. heavens for the uh, you know, <laughs> EMR and, uh, yes. and, 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 and real use right, <laughs> initiatives that are going on. Okay, so these are actually yeah. Doctor's notes that are that are in exactly. electronic form. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, you're not. You haven't. You know, solved the speed of light problem, and, and we have not yeah, solved right, the doctor okay. handwriting, <laughs> doctor problem. handwriting yeah. problem. That'll be a new company, I think. Okay, but <laughs> so Rick, you said that you know the, the the real value is what's behind the firewall, and I wouldn't dispute that for the vast majority of companies that's true. But you're sort of behind the firewall or, or not agnostic. Or, or exactly. Agnostic. Are you, Internal you don't care, right? It doesn't matter. If I'm a customer and I say, well, I really care about social data, you can help yeah. me with social data. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And and we will get help you get that social information in. And, but we'll also say, okay, well if you're trying to do customer experience analytics and understand what's the, what are our customers telling us by looking at the social channel, for many industries that's one piece of the pie. Email is still a predominant communication mechanism for customers interacting with businesses, or even call center notes. All that stuff has, has a broad coverage across the customer base that complements what's happening in the social ecosystem. So the, the, the challenge I think a lot of people have with the Tivio is you, you're a platform and you can do so yep. many different things. You know, we've talked about that before on, on theCUBE. It's so powerful. And, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. 
Where are you finding the, the, the best traction? I mean, you guys have you know, just did another big raise a little while yeah. ago. You got some great technology. You got a nice customer list now. And so you've taken your time to build up you know, pretty, pretty strong company. So you're getting footholds, I would imagine. Can you talk about some of those areas where you're, you're getting traction? Yeah, I mean, uh, high level generally, it's in the business value side of the big data conversation, to be honest. It's going in and saying to business users, what information is relevant to how you conduct your business day to day? Let's help you analyze that. How do you make decisions today? How can we bring in the emails to help you better understand what customers are, are excited about or not excited about or unhappy about? So in and, and terms of different industries, you know, financial services has always been a strong industry for us because there's such an impact when you move the needle a little bit by bringing more relevant information. Even a tiny amount can be a huge benefit. Uh, we've also seen a lot of manufacturing. So warranty claims analysis is popping up all over the place. Uh, looking at CRM cases, supply chain comments. Uh, in telco, it might be technician notes out in the field to understand why people are having cost overruns servicing a cell network. Uh, all these places where you can have a real impact on actual business problems, the core business KPIs, by bringing in more relevant information, more valuable context to the, an the analytical process, the decision making process. And, and talk about what makes a Tivio unique. Um, I mean, obviously, well, from my standpoint, it's the ability to deal with the different textures yep. of data. That's, that's unique. Uh, but, but, but maybe in your words you can describe sort yeah. of what's your big differentiator. There are kind of two major pieces to it. One is getting deep insight from the world of human created information, be able to go and get it where it lives, understand it, analyze it, and make it available to the BI ecosystem. So that's an analytics component. There is an analytics, yeah. text analytics, natural language processing. And then on top of that, we've created a, a unique data store that lets you in a very agile way connect the insights from that world with insights, let's say you're getting from Hadoop, with the structured data that's relevant to the business. So you get that true 360 connection without having to do a lot of data modeling, a lot of data modeling overhead. Okay, so, uh, so that was one piece of it, the, yeah. the, 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 um, the, the, the ability to deal with things like, like yeah. analytics. There was another one that I... That yeah, I, and basically it's, it's to connect the two. Yeah, okay, so it's to that take was the okay. structured data, connect it with these unstructured content, unstructured and data insights. So on number there. two, what role does visualization play in terms of painting that picture? Well, I mean, it basically puts a face on it, right? And, and Tableau is fantastic at showing, you know, really when visualization, it's about showing you what you should care about, right? It's about what's the outlier, what's the trend, and then you want to say, well, why do I see this trend? Why is this outlier there? And that's, and oftentimes the unstructured content, the big content, provides that <laughs> critical context. And if you can visualize that as well, through common key concepts and sentiment, you can get a complete picture in a single dashboard. So what kind of integration have you done with Tableau? So it's actually very straightforward. We, uh, we're unique in the market in that yeah, we support ODBC and JDBC and SQL access to very much a, a store that is, I guess would fall into kind of the NoSQL store bucket. Uh, but in addition to SQL, we support a full text search language. And, and so we're pretty unique in that Tableau, when they look at information we've collected, whether it's emails or documents, it's tables, it's rows, it's columns, that Tableau users are already used to analyzing, they know how to use the technology. It's very easy to pick up and adopt. So another thing about uh, uh, Tivio, again, it's this platform, it does yep. a lot of different things. I would imagine you've got people in your ecosystem or your customer base, uh, they might use bits and pieces of that platform. You mentioned search, you mentioned text analytics. Um, uh, so, are you finding that? Are you finding that people are, are yeah, hey, I want to use Lucene search, or, or will they use your search because it's more powerful? What are you seeing in terms of the, the components? Are people buying the whole enchilada, or are, yep. they, are, they, or are they utilizing piece parts of your technology? Uh, I think it's certainly, most of the platform is really what people are interested in, because even if they come from the search side, they usually have found too many limitations in the, in the search world, in the search technology base, and they realize that because we can look at data from a relational standpoint, we can model data with the kind of same mapping that, you know, the, the cardinality of a database, you know, the, not to get too technical, but uh, yeah. the idea being that they're saying, you know what, not only do we want to search, we want to relate. We want to analyze, we want to visualize, and that's really why we were founded in the first place, is that there are these use cases coming out of the search world, out of the BI world where we wanted to cross over between the structured and the unstructured domains, and that's what our technology's been designed to do. Um, Rick, so we're here uh, just outside the, the nation's capital, so uh, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit about what are you seeing in terms of adoption trends of both your technology, Tableau, but you know, even more generally, just kind of the, uh, as the big data world kind of evolves and we're starting to see more yeah. you know, real applications being deployed. Um, is government is the government sector uh, a place where you guys play? And are you seeing anything interesting there? Obviously, it's in the news a lot yeah. for, for intelligence, for the intelligence flap at the NSA and, and other things. Um, but what role do you guys play there? Do you do you have a lot of government customers, and uh, are you seeing pickup in that in that area? Yeah, government's actually a, a, 
great use case as well. I mean, obviously intelligence, the high profile stuff, but government in a lot of ways acts like a business. So they have some of the same systems, support tickets and things that you want to analyze as well. So uh, it, it's applicable all over the place in the government sector. Uh, and we have done some work to, with some from various uh, entities around the world and that sort of thing in the intelligence space, but that's probably all I'm supposed to uh, say about it, so. <laughs> sure, yeah. I understood, but yeah, I mean, good point. I mean, there's the, they have a lot of the same issues. Um, yeah. You know, in, in, in business, they talk about the 360 degree view of the customer. Yep. In, in government, for good or for bad, the 360 degree view of the citizen. Um, what about uh, other other uh, industries or verticals you're seeing um, yep. as this kind of this conversation around big data evolves? Are you seeing any particular pickup? You mentioned financial services. Yep. Um, are you seeing any more of the what you might call more traditional or maybe not as tech savvy industries, whether it be uh, manufacturing, even agriculture, yeah. starting to pick up uh, in the use yeah. of this kind of Manufacturing, technology? Yeah, manufacturing absolutely. We're seeing lots of activity there. Healthcare too. Mm. I mean, healthcare is huge. There's, especially with the Affordable Care Act, there's lots of mandates now to go to, you know, kind of outcomes-based medicine, outcome-based care, and a lot of that's going to be measured by textual interactions, patient feedback, and surveys, and it needs to be captured and analyzed to for, for reimbursement. And mm -hmm. it's how the whole economics of healthcare can be based around this type of information. Right, absolutely. I think in, in healthcare, there's, there's huge opportunity to improve outcomes, uh, but there's also, based on due to regulations, the, the requirements, reporting requirements change. Um, how does Tivio help uh, healthcare organizations actually navigate that, um, all those regulations and those concerns around privacy and security uh, related to HIPAA and other uh, regulations? Yeah, that's actually one of the great strengths of our platform is that we have a really, uh, really elegant and uh, mature security model. So controlling row level based access to information is something that we do extremely well and very flexible, very flexible for very complex security infrastructures. So you have oftentimes not just one simple authentication authority, you have a whole bunch you have to deal with. And our engine, because of its agility, lets you handle that, that native security mm -hmm. model and apply it in a very uh, performant way against the data as users are querying and they're interacting and requesting information. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the company a little bit. So, you know, we're obviously we're here at the Tableau event. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, yesterday uh, about the, uh, you and I off camera, about the uh, Tibio's basically partnering strategy and how you're uh, looking to go to market with some partners. Tell us a little bit about your strategy there around, um, obviously you've got a relationship with Tableau. What's really your, your uh, partnership or alliance strategy? So our, our strategy is to create our view of, of what the big data space should look like and what a good portfolio of technologies are to deliver on all the pieces of relevant information out there and bring them together to the end user for a business purpose. So when we look at, you know, we also partner with Informatica, for example. You know, the stuff they do on the structured data side of the world, those are hard problems that have been there a long time. They're not going away. So th their technology is critical to be able to, do, to get a clean view of that side of the world and then we can connect that up with the, the new view, the new information, the big content side and the analytics that we're doing mm -hmm. to create this enriched view, the highly contextual view that is really starting to move the needle for a lot of companies in a lot of different industries. Mm -hmm. And so what about on the database side? I mean, you, you, you have some functions that uh, seem to put you in a little bit of competition with some of the database players, but also I can see them being complementary in a lot of ways yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's your kind of relationship with that growing ecosystem, uh, not just the relational world, but the certainly the NoSQL world and uh, the Hadoop yeah. world? Yeah, so we uh, we partner with Cloudera in terms of you know, the Hadoop vendor we work with, but you know we're we're, uh, we're a Java-based platform, so it plays nicely with all the different Hadoop technologies that are out there. Uh, we've also worked with some of the analytic database vendors. Uh, our text analytics live in a pretty unique part of our infrastructure. It let us, uh, in addition to bring the information together with structured data, we can actually push it to other places as well. So if someone has an analytic database and they want new text-based dimensions like text analytics, key concepts, sentiment, we can absolutely deliver that to those environments as well. How is um social data playing into this. I, I know you were saying a lot of it's sort of behind the firewall, but there's plenty of social data, yeah, absolutely. social interaction going on behind the firewall. Uh, we were asking Nate Silva about, about this uh, notion of crowd spotting. Yep. Um, essentially, the idea being that you've got a lot of interactions in the crowd, you know, the wisdom of the crowd, et yep. cetera. Uh, but are you able to, are you finding that customers are able to actually get value out of that data? Um, do predictive analytics out of that data. I wonder if you're seeing that trend start to emerge. We see it in specific industries. So uh, I saw a great survey recently, I think it was uh, about six months ago, looking at what is the social media adoption uh, on a customer basis. So what percentage of customers interact with companies and by industry through social media? And outside of retail and entertainment, that's probably about 40, 50% of the customer base. Is, that's kind of a, a pretty high number as well. But when you go to financial services, it's 10%. I suspect a lot of that's retail banking in particular. So for our uh, institutional investor customers, that's not as relevant to them. 
but they do, they do want to tap into the customer conversation, which brings us back to those internal sources. So we, we really think about holistically, it's the internal plus the external. You, you obviously need social, it's important in certain, certain industries, uh, and you don't want to ignore it, there's a lot of value there, but it needs to be brought together with more contextual information to provide that true analytical view you can use to make decisions. Okay, so, so it's taking that one step further, because uh, Nate Silver was skeptical yeah. that you could actually you know, get value out of it, because basically that social data is so new, yeah. um, and it's changing so fast. Uh, do you find the same attributes of the data when it's behind the firewall, or is it more stable? Is it more, there's more metadata? This, yeah. you know, can you get better predictions out of that data? Is there a real schism there? Yeah, well, first of all, it, that text tends to be more, you know, in the case of English, more regular English that someone's used to, to writing or dealing with words. You look at things like Twitter and Facebook. The Easier language to grok, you mean. Well, yeah, grok, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, the language evolves continually in terms of abbreviations yeah. and things like that. Uh, so it does make it a lot, a lot harder to, to get into and mine in some cases. But the internal information tends to be yeah, more contextual, more consistent. There's far less sarcasm, right? You know, uh, sarcasm is always a big conundrum on the social side because even human beings don't get sarcasm sometimes, right? So it's it's very hard to tell uh, when something's sarcastic or not. But you don't have that as much behind the firewall. You know, if you have a customer case, you're going to be able to find what products are involved, what are the issues, are they happy with the interaction, are they getting frustrated? That's the kind of stuff you can pick out very easily. There's more sort of standards, if I can use that term. And you got yeah. you have classification engine as well. Exactly. I got to believe it's easier to classify behind the firewall than is outside the firewall, is that true? A absolutely, and, and there, in certain industries like financial services, we've actually had companies that want to use ontology, so we have an ontology module. If you're in life sciences, there's tons of ontologies out there that let you create a very nice kind of conceptual mapping of all the structured information and bring it into your decision making process. How do you guys price? Uh, can you share that with us? Do you price it by yeah, module? So our, our pricing is, is actually something that really kind of differentiates us in the market. Our philosophy has been that we don't practice, we call punitive pricing. The idea that we, if you're successful with our technology, we don't want to be charging you more, you know, as you add more servers, more CPUs. So we actually have an application-based model. So if someone wanted to use our technology for customer experience management, they would get an application license, and in that license, you know, typically they're perpetual software or term-based, they would have uh, unlimited data, unlimited servers, unlimited sources, and the way we scale is through, we believe we're going to deliver business value, and you're going to want another application, another application. That's how, how, and that's how it's worked out, and that a lot of customers are on their third, fourth, fifth application at this point. So it's, when it's application, it's the application that you guys provide, or that they develop, or a combination of both? It's, we kind of either jointly develop, or partners develop with them, sometimes customers develop them themselves. Uh, but yeah, so we define what that scope is, generally, of the business problem area, is kind of what defines the scope of the value that the, the technology is How delivering. do you measure that? Is that, can you automate the measurement of that, or is it just sort of, yeah, it's oh, another that, application popped yeah. up, here's a bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's something that, you know, we work with customers, and once you get in a situation, it usually is pretty obvious as to what that scope is and that definition. But it's something that we work with individual customers to figure that out, because we view it as a partnership. And that's part of the discussion is, we want them to be successful with technology, know what the costs are going to be, and be able to clearly measure their ROI and, and see a, a, big up, you know, a big gain when it comes to using our technology. Have there been any applications, Rick, that have really surprised you personally? That yeah, popped up? Well, we've done a number in oil and gas, actually, which is kind of an area where you know, I didn't really know much about it, but we started getting into it with some of our, some of our partners, and uh, there's some, health and safety is a great example. So, when you're operating oil rigs, anytime there's an injury, it shuts the rig down for a certain period of time while they investigate. And they, get, they write up reports about what happened, what machinery is involved, and that's all text-based. And right now it goes unanalyzed. It just gets filed away in a drawer somewhere. But if you're actually able to analyze that in real time and send out, a, you know, proactively take action and say, hey guys, we're having a problem with this part of the rig, there's this part that's faulty, it's causing injuries. If you keep one rig up for one day where it would have been down otherwise, it's millions of dollars. Right. You know, it's that's kind of cases where you get this huge gain just by making, just getting the right information to the right person at the right time. Right. How about stuff you're working on personally that, uh, that you're excited about? Yeah, so I, I'm in the partners organization at Ativio, so I've been doing a lot of work with some, uh, some OEMs, so we actually can't really talk about it too many now, but in the next few months we'll have some pretty exciting uh, partnerships coming out to market. Uh, also working with a lot of the big partners to create some value-added solutions, companies like Accenture or TCS, Mahindra, Tech Mahindra, uh, all big custom, or big partners of ours that I'm working with, and, and really what we're doing is looking at what are the repeatable solutions that they can bring to market around this unified, rich view of information. So, uh, you saw, did you see Nate Silver's keynote? Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to go to it. I didn't, I, I didn't get to tell He was going to answer the question, when is, was, when is the big data going to deliver big results, but I had to leave. And I'm not sure he answered it, but uh, when yeah. do you think big data is going to deliver big results? I think it's already doing it. Yeah. We do it every day, so. Uh, right. <laughs> 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 That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, yeah. well, wait a minute, aren't we doing yeah. this already? And uh, Jeff Kelly, of course, is quantifying all this. So, uh, <laughs> when do you think big data is going to deliver big results? It's oh, uh, I think uh, 2012. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> uh, next month, uh, middle of the month, around yeah. uh, 3 o'clock on a Tuesday. All right, thanks, Rick, for coming on theCUBE. It's always uh, good to see you. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. Our next, <coughs> excuse me, our next guest is uh, from Altrix. Uh, George Matthews coming on. He's the president and COO. They're doing some really interesting things. We're going to talk to him and unpack some of the things that they're doing with Tableau. This is theCUBE. We're right back after this word.